Hey there people, how you doing? This is episode number 10 of the Savage Balance podcast, a weekly podcast uh, with some writing, some rambling and some interviews, all wrapped up in one neat little podcast. How are you all doing? How are you? Are you enjoying yourselves? Are you enjoying your lives? Are you a bit stressed out or uh, thrown off course, off kilter by the recent Christmas news? Are you feeling a bit of a pinch for the end of the year? Are you feeling reflective? How are you feeling? Um, I wish I could listen to your answers, to be honest. It would be nice to have a conversation about this. Um, But instead, this is one way. So I've just triggered those thoughts off in your head and left you in a kind of little prison in which you can't express them. You just have to feel them. Um, So there you go. Little early Christmas present from me there. Um, Yeah, I hope you're all well. I'm doing okay. I think my head is just getting around the idea of... I think I'm just processing this year a lot more now. The last few weeks in particular have brought that all to me. Since the passing of my aunt through COVID, who was very close to me, I think that's just brought into perspective what's happened this year. So doing a lot of uh, thinking and reflecting, thinking about what needs to change for next year, what I can do to get more out of life. And um, so, you know what? I thought this was a good time to put this episode out. Uh, I wrote this when I was in a bit of a slump and I well, this is a couple of years ago now. And I thought, you know what? Let's just start writing. Let's just start writing, get these feelings out onto the page and see where they took me. And um, yeah, I, other than a few edits here and there, it just sort of took its own organic form, really. It's a bit of an exploration of my changing relationships with kind of atheistic, religious, Buddhist, Christian ideas um, just sort of came tumbling out of me. And again, it is a bit of an experiment, a bit of a weird one. Um, stick with it. See if you like it. It's not too long. <laughs> so if you don't like it, then, you know, so be it. That's OK. Um Yeah, I'm not sure there's much else to say before introducing you to this, so let's jump straight in, shall we? This is episode 10, Once Was Lost. Put them in my shoes, Jenny. The stones will hurt your feet. Nice neighbours, Irish. It's a beautiful early June day, an indication that summer is finally settling in. I haven't felt this kind of depression since I was a teenager. It's not that clear-cut, distinct, crisp sorrow, a full-on expression of misery, more a lack of something. There's a nothing, taking up a lot of space. Not a heavy sensation, but the absence of sensation. It's numbness, basically. I feel numb. The joy I've been trying to cultivate these past few years has been muzzled. The fly net's not covering the back door, and a desperate fly just made a dash for the kitchen. (laughs) Sometimes I don't know why I bother. I had a realisation in my early twenties. Not a moment of clarity, just a train of thought I kept returning to. Having always held some kind of pain, depression, anxiety, low self-esteem, numbness and purposelessness... I just thought, why bother being here and just accepting this, this feeling of constant sadness? Sure, happiness feels near impossible, but what else am I going to do? If it's going to be hard either way, then why not try to find a route that might offer me some kind of peace? The sun's beating off the ground, reflecting back up into my face. The heat carries the scent of warm turds, dog turds in fact, twinkling in the light. Since the age of 18, I'd been a pretty committed atheist. Having previously never had a solid philosophy, a way of processing life, an understanding of the world around me and my place within it, atheism gave me a sense of purpose. I felt invigorated and truly connected to my surroundings. The world made sense. 
At university, I shared a range of perplexing, sentimental, thought-provoking and defensive conversations, although I should probably add to that list unnecessarily standoffish debates. I felt like during that time I was kind, considerate, sensitive and genuinely interested. I gave people room to talk, I was respectful but direct with my response and wanted to hear what they had to say in return. At least, that's what it felt like. In reality, this was more a projected image of the person I was trying to be. Hmm. I've never painted a fence before. Don't know what colour I choose. I'm not really a colour person. I felt I had something to defend and wanted to win people over. I was sharing, but I wasn't properly listening in return. I was never truly engaged because I was too busy planning my response, staying one step ahead. Losing wasn't an option. I was okay with a pleasant stalemate, but I wouldn't have been okay with losing. There was one conversation with a Christian housemate where I remember saying, that's a good point, I hadn't considered that before, that's something I'm going to really think about. The thing is, I can't remember what they actually said. I can only remember what I said. The focus in my mind is on how graciously I conceded, proof of my inherent open-mindedness, but when it came to critically analysing what he said, I couldn't. I couldn't make my worldview vulnerable. I couldn't properly listen. Just to clarify, I don't mean intentionally not listening. At that time, I couldn't connect to the people around me. I was too lost in my own head. It relates back to this current teenage numbness. This anaesthetised state was a necessary learn reaction to cope with a set of circumstances a previous me couldn't deal with. A defence mechanism to avoid the unmanageable pain that, at the time, worked. The thing is, pain doesn't get filtered out exclusively. All emotion goes with it. Joy, fear, jealousy, awe, an ability to be vulnerable and connect to other people. Every sense becomes the victim of that dumbing down. This created a disconnect between myself and everyone else and cemented that struggle to be present. The tunnel we got our dog is blowing in the wind. It's about time we got rid of it, really. She's ripped massive holes in it. How do you recycle a thing like that, though? Atheism was crucial to me but I misunderstood the impact those discussions might have had on others. Well, maybe that's not fair, but I certainly wasn't as interested in healthy debate as I believed I was. My conviction was unflinching, but I never saw that as a negative trope. It just held such importance in my life. When my dad died, I took great comfort in knowing that after death, there was nothing. That once he died, that was it. There was no consciousness beyond life. No one there. Nothing present to feel anything. All that pain he felt. All that suffering that drove his self-destructive habits. They weren't there anymore. The sadness, the heartache, the uncontainable pain and the trauma buried deep within his muscle. All of that didn't exist anymore. Death gave him that freedom. It granted him that peace. I knew he couldn't be in pain. And that thought, to this day, gives me some degree of comfort. Oh, my hair's puffing out again. I keep catching a glimpse of it in the window. It's always the way, just how it dries coming out of the shower. It takes time to let the grease settle back in. Of course, then it'll only need washing again. Oh, I wish I was bald. Here's something, though. Atheism wasn't a cure for my depression. Having a construct in which to understand the world didn't make the lowest moments any more palatable. If anything, it romanticised it. Here I am, stuck on this lonely planet, hurling towards the grave, spiralling ever quicker down the plug hole, soon to be rinsed away with the rest of the filth. Actually, I'm being somewhat flippant. Truly understanding that life is finite, there is an end to all this, death is inevitable. Making the most of every second that passes was an equally powerful force in my life. Both these things are true. 
rather than aiding or abetting my mental states. All it did was inhabit and complement the deeper, pre-existing philosophies I already had. (laughs) Why are there so many ants cramped together on that daffodil stalk? Are they looking for shade? Is there some aroma that plants give off? Is that even a daffodil? Maybe they're just bloody nutters and bloody ants. (laughs) Watching Simon Amstel's Do Nothing stand-up show an environment where I felt my atheistic tendencies weren't going to be challenged, was probably my introduction to Buddhist concepts like acceptance and presence. It's where the tectonic plates of my core first started delicately shifting, reshaping the surface landscape so subtly as to not even be registered by the beast that hosts it. About a year ago, I was talking to a work colleague, initially intrigued by his meditation and the conversation soon became focused on his shamanic soul retrievals. I do believe that a younger me would have also been interested, but I felt a fundamental shift in my motivation for this intrigue. I would have felt his position was delusional, fishing for inconsistencies, searching for a snappy retort, whereas now I really wanted to hear him, to know how it felt, what his experiences were, how one would practice it. I wanted to understand. That bird wants to eat our strawberries. Go on then, you sneaky bugger. Just you try. I'm less interested now in asking people, is there a God? More, what gets you through the day? What are your beautiful, cliched, unique, inspirational philosophies on life? I don't serve this desire to win you over to my side. I'd rather find the universal truths that connect us all so we can focus on our similarities, not our differences. I understand terms like spirituality come with a lot of preconceived notions, as does, to be fair, atheism. But I don't think any of us want to be defined by the limited parameters of what a word's definition is. Unifying people under one truth was my previous aim, but I failed to notice that we were discussing the same base concepts explained through a different story. Our ideas around kindness, love and community sync up, just expressed through different characters. And to have those conversations, to share these ideas and reconnect is my new hope. To really listen, in the moment, undistracted. Ah, so I want to be undistracted, do I? Oh... Like when you missed the last scene of A Dangerous Method. To be fair, that was because of a coughing fit. Good film. Uh, a bit long. Fastbender, Knightley, Aragorn. I should really watch Lord of the Rings again. Mm, okay. There's a lot of practical and vital wisdom in these ideas that once I would have rejected. And it's through these notions that I've found some kind of liberation. It's not exactly true that this depression is the same as my teenage years. Back then, this headspace kept me separated from the world, kept me numb and disconnected from my friends, family and myself. I'd be completely lost, simply drifting off, hoping the tide would wash me back up to shore. But now, that's different. The same feelings are present, but there's space to manoeuvre. I might feel adrift, but I know where the shore is. The time between each depressive episode is dramatically increasing. It rarely happens like this anymore. (laughs) You cheeky squirrel running up that tree, you. Oh, come on now, focus. 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 Like a fake swear word. Funt. Shin. Puck. Mm, Right. I have daily routines. Yoga, meditation, motivation and intention setting. I follow advice from the Dalai Lama's book. I'm actively kinder to myself and comforted when remembering I don't need to have all the answers right now. We are all capable of change. How we act how we behave, our desires, our philosophies, how we feel. There is potential for growth. 
life is not static. Static water goes stagnant and poisonous. We bathe and drink from water that flows. Even when feeling this depression, recognising that pain carries a message, and if we pay attention to it, rather than distancing ourselves from it, we can find the pathways out of it. Our pain makes sense. That's why I want to keep returning to the present, no matter how distracted I get. Always returning, even when it's painful. It could even be a sign that I'm getting closer to the source of my pain, the reason I needed to shut down in the first place, to cope with whatever message I had internalised. <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice? But for now, when it returns and I feel lost, I know I won't drown. I might even find gratitude as I stand in front of the potential pathway to a more authentic, meaningful life. I just have to stay focused. Hmm. Sun's back out. There's that hot turd smell again. Let's scrape it up. Time to grab my spatula. Now, where was I? There we are. That was episode 10. Once was lost. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. I always feel the need to um, explain when something's a little bit odd or a little bit, and I want to sort of, I say explain, I think actually what it is, is a feeling of wanting to justify it, justify trying something new and trying to, you know, uh, just just justify maybe not feeling it's as good as it could be. But um as a friend of mine told me, a writing friend, in fact, who's written some great stuff that I've read and whom I hope to have on this podcast one day, he said that if you have to start explaining your work, then it's not in the writing, then you haven't got it right in the writing. So maybe you experience that, or maybe it's my own paranoia. Who knows? Let's see what happens. If you do need any more explanation, then you can email me at savbowpod at gmail.com. I really love it. I've had uh, one or two messages and it's really nice to get those um long form emails uh open to discussing more about some of the stuff that i've said and some of the ideas and um yeah as i say i'd really like to get some input on what sort of um what's the word uh content you'd like what sort of things you're interested in hearing about maybe what perspective i can bring to it yeah i'd really be interested in that um so yeah, let me know. That is savbowpod at gmail.com. Um, send an email through. Chelsea have just scored, for those interested. It is Chelsea versus West Ham United. It is Monday the 21st of December. And Thiago Silva has scored, apparently assisted by Mount, uh, according to the BBC Sport website. I've really gotten myself right back into football uh, that's been happening slowly over the last couple of years, but it really has like started to really get in. I'm checking all the results, not just the Premier League, but the Championship, League One, League Two. And um, well, the most dangerous thing is an impulse is coming back to play football manager. And uh, maybe actually, maybe I could do a podcast about football manager one day. And I know maybe that sounds a bit boring for anyone not interested in football, but I guess the thing I'm thinking of is more to do with addiction because I just get heavily heavily addicted to that game I really do and and the fact that I haven't played it now for maybe 12 13 years and genuinely over the last year there's been like big rushes of like impulses like I used to smoke I don't get those sm- smoking impulses or well, very 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 rarely and quite minute really but football manager now is like it's I, like I see it in a shop or I think about it and I think get it buy it buy it and I'm just like oh my god <laughs> I'm addicted to book manager. Um, anyway, yeah, I, the, you didn't need to hear that. Well, it's the outro, you know. You could have, you can turn it off at any point. This is kind of admin and kind of rambling, isn't it? I'm not even sure if I'll get this episode up, to be honest, because this episode is on my hard drive and um, I can't get it to work. It's not working, so maybe I don't know. Maybe if it doesn't work. I'm going to have to just record something and then apologise profusely for it later. But there we go. One one thing, actually, um, before I forget to mention that uh, 
I mentioned in that piece that I have, you know, long, thick hair that when I wash just goes all poofy. Uh, that was written a couple of years ago, and I did have long hair then. Then I got it cut. Then I grew it out properly as the sides were shaved, and it was down to my shoulders. And as of uh, when f uh, Friday and Saturday, I think, I uh, shaved it all off. So I am actually basically bald now. <laughs> it's maybe a couple of millimetres long. I've never had hair that length before. But um, uh, it was funny to listen back to that today and think, oh, I was going, oh, I wish I was bald. And I was thinking, oh, I am bald. There we go. <laughs> wish granted. Um, and I'm not sure if I really appreciate the fact that it's happened now I'm, I'm in two minds about it but overall um you know it's hair or it's no hair and either way is fine by me um yeah i just thought that was funny i thought that was interesting anyway um yeah thanks for listening everyone sorry about all that <laughs> extra stuff there if you could share this podcast with your friends that'd be great uh, we have social medias it's instagram at savage balance podcast and Twitter is SavBowPod, although they will be dormant until the new year, but then I will fully start jumping back into it all again. There's a website as well, SavBowPod.com, um, which will have the transcripts of all these episodes and extra writing for, say, the interviews and stuff. To be honest, I haven't been keeping up to date with it last few weeks. Lots of other stuff's been going on in my head and in my life. Um, so I'm going to update it all in the new year or for the new year, something like that. But as I say, I'm taking a bit of time to process everything. So I'm not even going to promote this once I've once I've put this up. It's just going to be there. So you'll either hear it in time or maybe you'll hear it down the line. I don't know. Anyway, that's what's going on. If you could subscribe, comment, rate and review. I genuinely, I did not expect to really, really appreciate when these things happen, but they really actually do mean a lot to me personally, as well as, you know, helping me old iTunes, oh, Apple Podcasts, sorry, uh, ratings and rankings and such like that, but there we go. Um, artwork is by Dolly Gray, music is by Danny Tonks. Do genuinely go and check their stuff out. There are links down below in the show notes to their stuff and, you know, on the Instagrams that they've got and you know, go and support them any way you can get involved because they just both are hugely talented and wonderful people and deserve to be uh, praised and getting more out of their work. So, yeah, there's, yeah, wonderful stuff. Sorry for such a long outro. Um, <laughs> there you go. As I said earlier, you could have turned it off. You still can turn it off now, but, you know, you are literally seconds away from the end. So weird time to bail out, to be honest. But, um, hey, there we go. Thanks very much for listening. Have a um, if if I don't catch you before beforehand, um, have a great Christmas. Have a good time. Um, I'll catch you just before the new year. And um, yeah, take it easy. Look after yourselves and each other. Be kind, compassionate, and um, empathetic, and joyful to yourself. Um, you know, it's not all serious. So have some fun this Christmas um, yeah please take care of yourselves thanks very much speak to you later <laughs>